Is hydrogen water better than alkaline water? This seems to be a popular discussion point amongst water enthusiasts. What most people don't know is the differences between the machines that produce these waters. In this video, I'm gonna break down how these systems work and the pros and cons of both of them so that you can make the decision for yourself. First, a big thank you to our supporters on Patreon. Making these videos is a lot of work and we love being able to offer them for free. But these companies and individuals have seen the value of what we offer and decided to support us. There are so many things to know about hydrogen and we're proud to be one of the top educators in the industry. We would love your support as well to continue to share the good news about hydrogen to the masses. So let's get down to business. How many of you know what electrolysis is? Big word, right? But that is how most alkaline or hydrogen systems work. And so that is one of the main things we will discuss. Electrolysis is a decomposition of water into its natural elements. This is done by running an electrical current through water. Now with conventional water electrolysis, you must have ions present, but we'll get into that later. In electrolysis, there is always a negative electrode called the cathode and a positive electrode called the anode. Hydrogen gas is produced at the cathode through the process called reduction. This is where electrons are supplied and oxygen gas is produced at the anode through oxidation, which is where electrons are removed. Hydrogen gas and oxygen gas are produced at the same time. A helpful acronym to remember how the process works is oil rig, which stands for oxidation is loss meaning loss of electrons. And reduction is gain, meaning gaining of electrons. Now that all might sound confusing, but what better way to help you understand it than with pictures? First, I'm gonna show you how water electrolysis works in an alkaline water ionizer. Over here is the cathode or the negative electrode. And on this side is the anode or the positive electrode. In the middle is an ionic membrane to keep the water stream separate but allows electrons to flow through. First, we're going to break down the cathode side, which is referred to as the catholite. This is where the drinking water comes from. So first we see the water molecules come in, which are of course H2O. Next, we see electrons coming off the cathode into the water. Those electrons then attract protons off of the water molecules forming hydrogen atoms. With that proton missing, those water molecules are now hydroxide or OH minus. This is the alkaline component of water. And it is for this reason that this water has a higher pH. The higher pH of the water is truly a byproduct of producing hydrogen gas through electrolysis. And because hydrogen is a diatomic element, hydrogen atoms are too reactive to exist by themselves. So they find a friend in each other and form molecular hydrogen or H2. By the way, I broke this process down into stages so you can really see what's happening in electrolysis. But in reality, this process is happening instantaneously to trillions of molecules. So if you're familiar with alkaline water ionizers, this is what's happened to the water that's coming out of the top hose. Now let's look at the anode or the positive electrode. This water is often dispensed through a hose from the bottom of the machine. So on the anode, we start with hydroxide. Hydroxide, the alkaline component of water, is always present in water, just like the acidic component, which is hydrogen cation. Now, when the hydroxide is oxidized at the anode, it loses electrons, which leaves oxygen atoms and hydrogen cations. Hydrogen cations are simply protons and the first form of hydrogen. There are technically four forms of hydrogen, not including its isotopes, which we discuss in this classic video here. Oxygen is also a diatomic element, so the oxygen atoms bond together to form oxygen gas, or O2. And the remaining protons are the reason this water has an acidic pH. All conventional water ionizers produce a form of hydrogen-rich water called electrolyzed reduced water. Ionizers were around for years before hydrogen gas was discovered to be the sole reason this water has therapeutic benefits. So this technology was mainly created to produce alkaline water, not hydrogen rich water. So with that being said, let's discuss some of the pros and cons of these types of water machines. 
Starting with the pros, the technology has been around for a long time, so it's well established. They can generally produce large volumes of H2 water quickly and upwards of two to four liters per minute. And they can produce a disinfectant water, which has levels of hyperchlorous acid, a very strong killing agent. Although it's not optimally designed for producing this killing agent. And not all ionizers have this function. I actually explained this in detail with this video talking about what's really going on with the special waters in these machines. Now to the cons. Water ionizers are inconsistent and unreliable in terms of dissolved hydrogen levels. They are highly dependent on source water conductivity or minerals for H2 production. They typically exhibit lower dissolved H2 concentrations at least while maintaining a pH that's safe to drink. Because the hydrogen concentrations can be so low, you may have to drink a significant amount of water to get a therapeutic dose of hydrogen. They do not incorporate any type of dissolver technology to help hydrogen dissolve into the water better. The higher electrical current produces larger H2 bubbles which will not dissolve into the water as well. Higher pH of the water promotes scaling or calcium precipitation. You may need to fine tune the flow rate to maximize the dissolved H2 levels. They can produce H2 water with a pH above safety regulations. We went into even more depth with these two videos, the truth about ionized water and the problem with water ionizers. Definitely go check those videos out. So now let's look at the newest iteration of water machines on the market. These can be referred to as hydrogen water generators or hydrogen infusion machines. They use a special PEM SPE water cell for producing hydrogen water. If you have heard of these types of generators, you may have heard of these letters being spoken of, but maybe didn't know what they meant. PEM stands for proton exchange membrane, which refers to the purpose of the membrane. They exchange protons. And SPE stands for solid polymer electrolyte, which refers to what it is, which is basically a polymer material with embedded electrolytes and allows hydrogen cations and electrons to transfer across the membrane. The membrane itself is conductive and does not rely on the conductivity of the water. This allows these devices to produce H2 regardless of the source water conditions. And they produce H2 water without altering the pH. These devices generally produce an H2 concentration of 0.5 milligrams per liter to more than 5 milligrams per liter of H2. They typically produce H2 water at therapeutic concentrations more consistently. So let's look at how electrolysis works with a hydrogen water generator that uses a PEM. First, let's remember what our alkaline water ionizer electrolysis looks like so we can compare. In a hydrogen water generator, we're going to swap out that ionic membrane for our new PEM membrane. And the cathode and anode are going to be moved closer and sandwich that membrane. So now the catholite is over here and the analyte is over here instead of in between. This time, let's start with the anode. Just like in conventional water electrolysis, the anode starts with hydroxide. Hydroxide is oxidized, which remember means it loses electrons. This leaves us with oxygen atoms and hydrogen cations. The oxygen atoms bond together to form oxygen gas. Now, this is where hydrogen infusion machines or PEM electrolysis differs from conventional water electrolysis. Due to the characteristics of PEM membranes, they can store and transfer these hydrogen cations across the membrane towards the cathode. It is important to note that the PEM does not transfer every hydrogen cation across the membrane. The analyte still becomes acidic and acts as a reservoir of hydrogen cations. That way, the system can continually produce hydrogen gas. Now, onto the cathode. Just like conventional water electrolysis, the cathode supplies electrons. However, like we just explained, the anode supplies the hydrogen cations or protons instead of the drinking water. The electrons from the cathode bind with hydrogen cations from the PEM and form hydrogen atoms. And then hydrogen atoms bond together to form molecular hydrogen or hydrogen gas. Depending on the type of hydrogen water generator, the hydrogen gas is either transferred to a dissolver chamber to be dissolved into the water, 
like some bigger hydrogen fusion machines, or immediately dissolved into the water, like some hydrogen water bottles or pitchers. And with these systems, there will always be a port to off-gas or expel the oxygen gas. Now, let's get into the pros and cons. For the pros, using hydrogen water generators generally requires less water to ingest a therapeutic level of H2. Now, I'm mainly talking about bigger machines. There are many portable hydrogen water bottles or pitchers that use PEN that still require you to drink a lot of water. These systems do not rely on source water conductivity to produce H2. They will typically use some type of dissolver technology. This is a pro because hydrogen gas is not very water soluble. This means the hydrogen gas does not want to dissolve into the water. And using some method to encourage it to dissolve into the water will achieve higher dissolved hydrogen concentrations in the water. They provide more consistent levels of dissolved H2. They have the ability to produce higher concentrations of dissolved H2. These systems are generally easier and simpler to use. There is little to no influence on the pH of the drinking water, so they are less likely to scale. They eliminate majority of the limitations of water ionizers. And there is far less maintenance. Now the cons are they generally have a lower dispensing flow rate. So it takes longer to fill a glass of water. And there are usually limited applications for cleaning and descaling these systems. However, like I said, there is less maintenance. So there are fewer reasons for cleaning or descaling the system. So I hope now you have a greater understanding of how these two systems actually work. Pretty simple once you break it down. And not only does it help to know what's happening during electrolysis, it also helps us to know what is not happening during this process, which can help us discern what is true or not and refute false claims. So that leaves me to my question of the day. Which type of water generator seems to be better for drinking hydrogen water? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to check out all the information in the description and like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep track of our videos. And that was your electrifying dose of H2 in minutes.